Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to round two of the late for class car videos for the day. <clears throat> As I mentioned in the last one on Captain America, this was this one's also going to be about political agendas creeping into uh, good storytelling and whatnot. And this time around I want to talk about uh, the Twilight Zone in this reboot or remake or whatever of the Twilight Zone that CBS All Access is doing. Now I was a huge fan of the Twilight Zone, fans of my channel and, and live streams or whatever realized that. In fact, the Twilight Zone uh, is one of the, the series that influenced my, my own graphic novel right now on Indiegogo, Tales from the Stacks. I, I like those kinds of anthology series where you have uh, standalone yet thematically linked stories uh, told by a host, introduced by a host, and uh, you know, they're these creepy stories. Creepy, uh, they're uncanny, that's the word I like to use, because they can run the gamut. They can go, they can go from um, unnerving, like the Twilight Zone, uh, to flat out, you know, let's say horror, like Tales from the Stacks, I mean, Tales from the Crypt. Uh, Tales from the Stacks is probably leaning more towards the Twilight Zone, to be honest, but, you know, they're, they're all of that, of that nature. So, th those, those stories are, are impactful, and they're, and they're powerful, because they're so short, and because they they embody what Poe called, what Edgar Allan Poe called the unity of effect. They're, they're so short that if they're told well, and if all of the elements come around them and, and, uh, and, are, and are woven in just so, then they can really give you a good solid gut punch with an effect. They can really, uh, really provoke a, a real effect or a real emotion or a real uh, thought provoking or question within your mind. They're really good at that. And the Twilight Zone writers were incredibly good at that. Not every single episode was amazing. I mean, they had some of them that were a little weaker, you know, whatever. But overall, the series was incredibly good at that. And uh, and, and yes, absolutely, the Twilight Zone, uh, these, these stories were little, uh, you might call them, to some degree, little moral fables. But the thing about them, though, is that they were incredibly uh, generalized in their moralizing so that you could apply them, you could take them and, and, and apply them to your life in, in any way that, that, you know, was necessary. That's the key. This article, I read the article in The Hollywood Reporter, I'm sure it's out there in a bunch of different places, I've seen people uh, writing about it or posting about it on Twitter all over the place, but the creators of the new Twilight Zone series have come out and said flat out that they are uh, they are 100% eager to to push an agenda with this series. They and they even have the gall to say they want this to be a progressive series like the first one was. <laughs> really playing fast and loose with that word progressive, because if you're going to apply it to the original Twilight Zone, <clears throat> then I, I don't know. I don't even like that word at all in any way. But so yeah, okay. What kind of what kind of morals and, and whatever was was Rod Serling and the writers of Twilight Zone pushing? Well, that series came out in '59 through the early '60s. What what kind of specific political things of that day did that did that show speak to? Uh, it spoke about war. Yeah, sure. War's a general a general problem that's been with humanity long before the Twilight Zone and has remained long after. So yeah, they had some episodes here and there that spoke about war, but none of them called out specific politicians of the day. None of them uh, called for supporting a vote a certain way on any of the bills of the day. You had Rod Serling himself, a veteran of World War II, and he uh, and he and he made many issue many episodes about the the danger of of cultish like belief, you know, and stuff like that that the people had given Hitler, and and absolutely. And, uh, and the Repub and the Democrats are the, uh, the, the not just the Democrats, no, the the SJWs, the extreme psycho liberals. They are so quick to pretend that uh, that oh, you know, Trump and his supporters. Well, hey, that's that is the cultish like behavior. Look at that. It might as well be Hitler. Hyperbole, much people. I mean, come on, seriously. Go back and watch the inauguration of Barack Obama. And you tell me that Donald Trump's followers are cult to get their belief in support of him. No, come on, this is ridiculous. They, they, they just, they, they have. A, a, I get tongue-tied and just mind-boggled when, when I think of the uh, 
the complete lack of any sort of intellect or logic that people fall into when they, when they start pushing this kind of political idea. But anyway, that's what that's what uh, the, the makers and the creators of the new Twilight Zone think. They think that oh yeah, Rod Serling, he was um he'd be right here with us today. He'd be one of us, the resistance. Um, who knows? But the point is, he was a storyteller, not a propagandist. They want to be propagandists. They, they flat out said that. They even specifically talk about they, you know, this one writer and his episode, and he's going to combat, which he literally said, toxic masculinity. Are you freaking kidding me? Toxic masculinity? That's going to be the moral lesson of your episode? That just reduces the whole series. It reduces everything about it. And that's what, that's what making a story or a character so specifically political like this, that's what it does to either the mythology or just the, the fiction and the power of the fiction and storytelling is it reduces it. It reduces it. It's not going to have any sort of long-lasting resonance past this cultural moment because you've so specifically linked it to this cultural moment just to make yourself feel better, just so that everybody knows your political viewpoint or whatever. That's nonsense. This whole idea of toxic, toxic masculinity, it's not going to be a, a thing. You guys are pushing it as though it's just the, the greatest evil of our day. No, it, it's a specific even manufactured to a great deal political uh, agenda right now uh, political buzzword in order to push push a greater even theme of political agenda no that's not going to work there was another one too I think another episode talking about something else they wanted to push well we're really uh, it, so they tried to link it they tried to say oh yeah you know this is just like the first one no 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 and then uh, I think it's Jordan Peele at the end of the article is quoted as saying yeah, you know, I mean, we have to be careful, of course. People don't like to be preached to. They don't like to be preached to, you know. So you just have to, you have to entertain them, entertain them, but then but then make sure you get your message across. Are you even listening to yourself? Are you even listening to the words coming out of your mouth? You you are wanting to preach to them. This is preaching. They, they, and this is what they can't understand because their worldview is so so diminished and reduced into thinking that uh, that they're right. They're right, they're right, they're right, and everybody who doesn't agree with them is wrong. So they have every right, they have a responsibility to uh, to indoctrinate with their with their viewpoint. That's not what storytelling, that's not what uh, what what good fiction, what good story does, whether it's mythology, like a like a mytholo mythological hero or icon like Captain America, or whether it's just a uh, just you know, well told stories like something like Twilight Zone. The, the job of these stories is to recontextualize any issues that are coming out today. I've mentioned about this, I've talked about this before on my channel. You take the issues that are current in today's world and you don't provide thin allegories for them. That's that's cheap. That's cheap storytelling. There's no art to that. That's just an allegory. That's just an allegory. And it's it's a, like a political cartoon. You know, it's relevant for like the, the, the day the issue comes out of the newspaper that it happens to appear in. And then it's over. And then it's over. Then it interests nobody but a historian. What you need to do is you take those current issues of the day, and you don't uh, you don't just play partisan politics with them, but you recontextualize the issue. You you give it you you set it especially like in a Twilight Zone setting. You know you set it in some sort of future post-apocalyptic or whatever world. You don't even thinly disguise it like that though. You don't just have a, a Trump stand-in in the future or whatever. No, that's stupid. Come on, get, have a bit more creativity than that. It's ridiculous. No, you recontextualize it with with an alien race and and uh, and you you bring in some other issue or whatever. The idea is that you tell a story that people can think about and possibly speak to the situation, but you don't directly tie it. You don't directly have stand-ins for your side and all those evil people who disagree with you. That's that's not good storytelling. That's that's the, that's again, that's the element that's the level of of a, of a you know, a fifth grader storytelling. That's not proper. I mean, what do these people even go to school for writing? Do they really? I mean, I'm really beginning to, to wonder if, if anybody's ever had a writing workshop, if anybody's ever studied the art of fiction at all, or if they just pull people in because they say the right things on Twitter. This, this is ridiculous. Twilight Zone was a magical, magical series. The, the reboot they did in the 80s, that was, it was pretty solid. You know, it, it kept to the spirit, too. You know, it wasn't, nothing's going to match the magic of Rod Serling's original. But they, and... You know, obviously, I'm not going to watch any of the episodes. Apparently, it's this 10-episode series. You have to pay for CBS Access anyway to watch it. So, yeah, who the hell is going to do that? Um, but but I, I already sense from the feel of it, from the commercials I've seen, they really don't really have any... They don't have any... 
any desire to make this the uncanny. They don't have any desire to make this the delightfully creepy because nothing in the commercial was creepy. Jordan Peele walks out in a suit. He's just a guy in a suit. I mean, you know, the Super Bowl commercial? Okay, all of a sudden the Super Bowl, you know, the, the stadium's empty. But what's creepy about that? I mean, Rod Serling's intros, you know, you, you, you had him... Uh, eerily there like a, uh, over over a scene that was already being played out or you had him you know with some sort of backdrop or whatever the music and then the the lighting and everything just kind of gave you this feel of you're, you're being transported you truly are entering into a twilight zone and uh in jordan peele you know these these sjw's who who write these series are are trying to turn these comic books or whatever they want you to think that you're already in the twilight zone that's what they believe and they even said something like that in the article. You, we're already in the Twilight Zone. Oh my gosh, look at all these things that are happening. Donald Trump and der, der, der. Uh so, so no, they they don't want to transport you anywhere. They want to to teach you right think and, and help you out of the Twilight Zone that you're in. That's that's not storytelling. That's not you people have no concept of how it's done. You don't God help the art of storytelling, seriously. It is becoming a lost art. It's a lost art. Comic books right now, flat out, absolutely, in, in the mainstream comics. Indie comics, thank God, it's still around. And, uh, and yeah, in, in television, it's just it's gone by the wayside. So many great franchises and great writing is just falling off here and there um, all over the place. It, it's, it's, it's insane, it's sad, and it's really, uh, it's really disappointing. So where do you go for that? What do you do? Where do you go for a great story? What do you do? You, well, you go to, um, you know... Things like the Indiegogo campaigns. I mean, they, they go to people who are reacting against this and trying to put out great stories despite that. You know, you find out, you know, which films or are, are, uh, are television shows, you know, that are, are actually still good. I mean, we, we talked about Alita Battle Angel, an amazing, well-told story. None of the political nonsense, you know, that was really great. And I'm sure there are things on TV and whatnot. In comics, like I said, there's the uh, there's the indie movement. I mean, you know, Comics Gate is, is putting out solid stories that, uh, that, that, that don't have this nonsense included. And, uh, and that's good. And eventually they'll start building mythologies as well. Uh, you know, once characters start to seep in and attach themselves to age-old archetypes and start to start to really resonate with people over time, that's, that's a long game that it'll have to play. But uh, until then, you know I have my own Tales from the Stacks graphic novel. Uh, there are other graphic novels out there like that or comic book issues that are being told. And uh, links to that is in the description. You know, find out find out what you like. Find it on television. Find it in the theater. But 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 vote with your wallet. Don't let this nonsense uh, hold sway. Just because you're too you're too lazy or too weak to to show any discernment. I mean, as I say on the on the channel, uh, the featured video on my channel, you consume stories responsibly. You you you. You get the culture that you support monetarily in the system that we have right now. And too many people just recklessly consume anything and everything because they're too terrified to, to not be in the know or they're too terrified to not uh, identify with the franchise no matter what. You know, hey, you put a Star Wars label on it, I'm going to see it. Well, you're part of the problem, so, you know, enjoy that. Anyway, uh, I could get into ramp mode, so I'm going to stop. But thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, these are heavy infuriating topics for the day. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, more to come, more live streams, more reviews, cultural commentaries, and whatnot. Until then, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.